Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me, as usual, is Life Enthusiast Health Coach Martin Patella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? I feel like the chicken little, Scott. I have uh, been kind of calling, there's a problem, people, there's a problem, people, but I'm thinking... Oh my God, I totally underestimated just how bad this is. I just, on the weekend, just before we record this, spent a couple hours listening to Zach Bush, Dr. Zach Bush, first in interview with Dr. Mercola and then on his own. And holy smokes, this guy opened my eyes. I mean, I knew there was a problem, but he really opened my eyes to it. And let me name the problem. Glyphosate. Roundup. Roundup. Mons Monsanto was just bought by Bayer, and because Monsanto has such a bad reputation and bad name, they're going to get rid of it and they're going to just put it under the Bayer name, which to me has from my youth a far nicer. Yeah. Baby uh, aspirin. Baby aspirin, that's right. And uh, so unfortunately, uh, Bayer is also going to have a bad name very, very soon. It's actually worse than that, Scott. Glyphosate is off patent in the last, I think, six or seven years it went off patent. So and everybody's using it. Anybody can make it. And the most of the manufacturing is now done in China. There are two billion tons of this stuff coming into the market per year. I mean, oh my the quantity goodness. of it that's just flooding the planet is insane. And it's being used indiscriminately on crops in the following way. The, the crop, either you have a GMO crop, genetically modified, that's been modified to withstand, withstand the uh, glyphosate itself. So, so withstand the poison, because glyphosate is a poison to get rid of weeds. Yes, to get rid of weeds, but th that's, that's not really how it works. It gets rid of everything living, except that which is strong enough to survive it. And they found some particular, I don't know what it was, I don't remember if it was a bacterium or what it was that was resilient enough to not be killed by glyphosate and they bred it into soy and corn that I know of and so all most of the corn and most of the soy that's grown in North America is grown with glyphosate so that means they plant it and as soon as it comes up they spray it so it kills everything except for the plants that they want and off it goes the plant retains some amount of this glyphosate. Now Monsanto told us that because it's water soluble, and this is a critical point, um, we will pee it out. And they could document that as much as we ingest, we pee it out, that's not a problem, right people? It's not a problem. Well, sort of, but there is a problem. And the problem is this. Glyphosate actually blocks the chicomate pathway, which is the pathway that microorganisms use for oxygen absorption, for breathing, their way of breathing. So the microbes that are normally living inside of our guts or on our, on our bodies, on the surface, inside, like there are different, there are trillions of bugs living in me, on me, every which way. But when I use glyphosate, they are affected strongly. And we're starting to see the problems. Uh, do you want to jump in with some crazy statistics, Scott? We're, ge we're getting close to uh, one in five young boys have autism, and yeah. one in 65 children are, are diagnosed with uh, autism. Okay, so before glyphosate, it was one in 5,000. Now it is in one in five. Yeah. That's an insane shift. Yeah, here's more. So here's what happens with glyphosate. Oh, I, I didn't say uh, how it also goes into the wheat. 
it goes into the wheat in the following way. It's not GMO wheat, it's regular wheat, but they spray it on it because when they are ready to harvest the wheat, they spray the glyphosate on it and it causes the plant to die. And in the process of dying, it actually tries to produce more of its offspring. So it actually increases the size and the weight and the quality of the grain. And it also dries itself out, so it's desiccated. And you want that, you want dry grain getting harvested off the field to be put in the storage silo. So to the farmer, it looks great. And he's assured that it's fine, no problem. Well, so now that the glyphosate's everywhere, it's getting into the water tables. It's going into the, from the fields, into the creeks and the rivers. And guess what? There was, this is where this Zach Bush story comes into focus. He's saying he used to work as a researcher as the, at the NIH, National Institute of Health. And he noticed that the patterns where most people were getting cancer have shifted with the introduction of glyphosate. In, the, in that interview with Mercola, he showed these um, slides where before and after, and all of a sudden you have this cancer alley, and that's down the Mississippi River. Because what happens with all the agriculture in the United States, all the rivers, all the creeks, all the rivers, they all end up in Mississippi. And guess where is the worst cancer uh, statistics of the nation? Down in the lower reaches of the Mississippi. That is just mind boggling, really. And then he says, well, now it's in water. It's in groundwater. It's getting into the aquifers. It's in the rain. It's in the breast milk. It's in everything. And because it's in everything, it's now affecting the digestive systems of us humans. We rely on bacteria. Like, for example, that vitamin B12 business that we talked about in our recent podcast. Vitamin B12 is normally manufactured in the gut of the human by a specific uh, type of bacteria. Well, what if that bacteria is negatively affected by glyphosate that you have ingested in your food and you're no longer making enough of it? What's the chance of getting the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency, which includes irritability, anxiety, and depression? Well, we have enough uh, road rage and depression for centuries right now. Well, it's rising, right? Like it's just yeah. becoming more and more prevalent in the general population, or at least in the population of the industrialized economies. So Martin, it sounds to me, as I'm listening to you, like we went from maybe a couple hundred years ago where we had unsanitary conditions, so way too many bacteria that were, and viruses that were the bad kind, to now where we have you know, hospitals that are, you know, stainless, you know, clean, sterile, or, we, or even homes that try to be very, very sterile. So we've, we've got this swing where we went so far, and we've forgotten that, like you said, there's an awful lot of this human body that we inhabit that is full of bacteria that has a very uh, symbiotic relationship with us, and we can't survive without. Um, and so what the glyphosate is doing is it's killing all of these weeds, that's, for example, in our stomach or in our digestive tract, which have very, very important functions. And now it's kind of like if you've got the side of a mountain and you uh, clear cut it and then you burn it and then you put poison on it so nothing grows and then you have rain and this, the side of the mountain comes down and the mountain's pretty much toast. Uh, and we're doing the same sort of thing to our body. It's slash and burn. And now, now we're wondering, you know, why do we have so much cancer? Why do we have so many heart attacks? Why do we have obesity? Well, these are all, and why do we have all these, uh, yeah, like mental. autism and mental illness and everything else that we really didn't have to this extent three or four hundred years ago? Yes, exactly. That's that's the issue. That is what's going down. However, so the sky is falling. However. Zach Bush 
started talking about the solution. He talked about the solution. He calls his solution Restore. And uh, he talks about it in somewhat obtuse ways, sort of not saying exactly what it is. But to a trained eye, it's pretty obvious what it is. And we have been tell us what it is, Martin. We have been selling it for years, Scott. We have been telling everybody, please use this. This is the interface that exists between dirt and a human. It's called humic acid. And humic acid got its name from humus. And humus got its name from compost. And it got its name, got its name from the stuff that makes soil a living um, organism. The difference between dead sand, like Sahara type of thing, and, uh, and a living soil is the humus. And the humic acid is a concentrated extract from that. And we actually have access to some ancient deposits that have already been processed by these bacteria and it's already stable and uh, no longer as active. So it doesn't give the body the, the same effect as eating dirt. But it has all the elements in it that are required to make this communication network work again. The, the humic acid contains phenomenal amount of uh, no, well, it's a complex molecule that facilitates cellular communication. Okay. So when I'm thinking of humic acid and fulvic acid, its cousin, I'm thinking of things that go in and take toxins out of the body. But you're telling me now that there's even more important things that, or other important things that it does, which is helping the, the bacteria in our, and our body communicate more. Yes, that is correct. It's, it's creating a terrain in which normal cellular communication is possible. The, the most important place for the humic acid is in the gut, in the small intestine. And we have talked about this previously. When you have problem with gluten, it's because it opens up the, the tight junctions. Like we talked about it where... Normally, the, the weaving in the villi in the small intestine is so tight that only fully digested amino acids go through. But when it's damaged, this, this weave is looser, there, the gaps are less tight, and under digested clumps of aminos or snippets of proteins will get through into the bloodstream, which then will be mistaken for foreign invaders. And so the immune system all of a sudden starts trying to get rid of these things that look like invasion. But in the process of getting rid of them, it ends up really attacking all types of tissues. So all of a sudden we have this inflammation in the joints and inflammation in the gut, and we will have uh, skin pigment disappearing or skin on the face hardening, or we'll be unable to produce tears or saliva, or we'll have aches and pains in joints or soft tissue or whatever. And we'll be having, getting all these names from doctors because doctors like to name these conditions by the body part in which it appears, or they give this syndrome name to it. And so you will have mig migraine syndrome and fibromyalgia syndrome and autistic syndrome and Sjogren's syndrome. And, and uh, it goes on and on and on when in fact what you've got is is your body attacking parts of it that it shouldn't be attacking because it doesn't have... The signaling is all messed up. It's all messed up. Right. And so it's, it's kind of like at war and you've got the guy with the flag and when he raises the flag, you send off the, canyons, the cannons. But the problem is he's raising the flag when your troops are rushing to do the attacking and so now you're bombing yourself. Yeah, sort of like that. The thing that came to me in my mind was shooting inside of an airplane while, while in flight, right? Right. The moment you shoot at somebody, you put a hole in the fuselage, and before you know it, everybody's getting sucked out. Uh, so anyway, so the hope is there. And I, I'm actually uh, heartened because I remember talking to a lady who, who told me, 
oh yeah, yeah, I'm gluten sensitive and I use humic acid when I get accidentally gluten and it saves me. She, she's using the uh, powdered version, which we also offer. She says, yeah, yeah, two, three teaspoons of the uh, humic powder and I'm good. Nice. Sure enough, I cracked open a new bottle of humic. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> good. In fact, let's so, demonstrate. Here's the, this is what uh, drinking water looks like when you uh, put uh, humic in it. <laughs> so it looks like ginger ale. Looks like, yeah, looks like tea. Tea. And it has a really, really good taste, right? Well, and so I've gone shopping and I ordered several uh, types of humic acid. And it appears that there are two main manufacturing methods. One is that it produces very, fairly acidic, awful tasting stuff. And then it's the other one that's more like the uh, tea method where you use hot water to extract it from the, from the dirt. And that produces stuff that doesn't taste like anything. Mm. Because I know I've been using humic and fulvic acid for years. And I just take, I have the liquid bottle that we have on Life Enthusiast's website. I just put four or five or six drops in a glass, eight ounce glass. It turns either like yours did or it turns like Coca-Cola except flat. And I drink it and uh, there's no taste at right. all. Right. And that's the thing, the, the, the version that we use or promote has no, no taste. So kids can take it without any fuss or muss. Whereas this other stuff, I went, I went online, I went on Amazon, bought the most popular one and uh, got it. And it tasted awful. Mm. And then I, then I sent it to my manufacturer for uh, evaluation. And he said, well, number one, it's only 20% as concentrated as what we have. And number two, it's got all this extra stuff added to it. This is not, not, not a great value. Hmm. Anyway, the guys felt like, oh, yeah, we got the right stuff. But we don't well, agree. right advertising. Right. So we are in a situation where we are poisoning ourselves and that is showing up as uh, cancer, as all sorts of different uh, problems because we're d destroying our digestive system. I would say that's one of the big things that glycemate does. And it's not likely that we're going to be able to convince the governments and farmers and everyone else uh, who uses Roundup to stop. So while we want to be spreading that message, we need to do something in the meantime to make sure that we're healthy. And that is by using humic acid. So Martin, what would you say would be a, a reasonable uh, amount of humic acid to take on a daily basis? Well, it's, it's a bit relative depending on the level of damage. We sell it in a two ounce bottle that should be enough for a grown up person per month. Okay. We also sell it in a 16 ounce bottle, which would be eight times as much. So that would feed a family. So I guess the answer to my question is, is if, uh, you're thinking about this and you think, you know, you've really been impacted a lot by glucimate. Uh, your best bet would be to call Martin and talk to him about it and then decide on a plan because obviously right. you're going to be <clears throat> and the, uh, probably low on a number of other things too that you should be uh, concerned about because your body's not absorbing. Yeah. If it's floral, if its gut system is, it has basically been uh, bombed and decimated. There are some people who are going to be really sensitive. So when you're starting out, you start with one drop and see what happens. One drop, two drop, it might be enough. And then you graduate to four and 10 and 20. And these days I don't measure. I just take the bottle and just go gloop. However much comes out, <laughs> that's the daily dose. I've done that many times. That's why I'm laughing. Right now I'm just using the dropper because I'm, trying not to make a mess. <laughs> For sure. So Martin, if somebody wanted to know more about this, maybe know more about how it might be affecting their body, what should they do? Well, get online, read, go and listen to uh, 
Dr. Zach Bush talk to Dr. Mercola. I mean, it's an awesome interview. It'll totally open your mind. And um, if you want to discuss it with me, call me. Look it up, www.life-enthusiast.com or phone 866-543-3388. You'll find the category in minerals, minerals humic and fulvic. They're listed there. We have multiple options, and uh, it's all good, tested, and working. Give us a call. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, everybody. You've been listening or watching to the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.